On today's episode of What's Going On with Shipping, we may know the cause for the severing of the pipeline between Estonia and Finland. The anchor fell off. I'm your host, Sal McCogliano. Welcome to today's episode. So if you are in the maritime industry or you follow the maritime sector, you know of a video that's been out there for years by two comedians, Clark and Daw, over in Australia, where they talk about the bow of a ship falling off. This is back in the day when tankers were a huge problem and we were seeing lots of tanker spills. And they do this comedic routine where they play the straight man and the news investigator, and they keep talking about the bow of the tanker just falling off. Well, it seems as if the anchor of a vessel just fell off, and that may be the cause for the severing of these gas and telecommunication pipelines between Estonia and Finland. We're gonna look at the evidence, you judge for yourself, but it seems pretty conclusive in many ways. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come in. So this is the vessel in question, the new new polar bear, Hong Kong registered vessel, which we have talked about here on the channel not too long ago, and we'll reference it in a second. Uh, this is the story from Reuters over at G Captain. Uh, damage to the ball. Baltic Sea gas pipeline earlier this month is believed to have been caused by a ship dragging a large anchor along the seabed, but it was too early to tell if this was an accident or a deliberate act, Finnish police said on Tuesday. Investigators said they are now retrieved a lost anchor from the seabed location where the pipeline ruptured on October 8th, and were investigating whether it belonged to a Chinese container vessel. Police have previously said damage to the Baltic connector, subsea gas pipeline, and two Baltic Sea telecoms cables was caused by an external mechanical force and we're investigating whether this was a case of sabotage or caused by accident. Broad drag marks that were seen on the seabed leading up to where the pipeline was broken and the anchor was lying immediately after the damaged spot. This is pretty conclusive. A narrow path was seen on the seabed stretching onwards for dozens of miles, police said. A piece of the anchor, one of its two spikes, had broken off, they added. Okay, this sounds like an anchor was dropped, dragged by a vessel, the anchor broke off, and then the chain dragged along the bottom for a long period of time. But again, let's uh, jump to a conclusion. Let's look at the evidence. So this is the vessel in question again, New New Polar Bear. We talked about it on What the Ship, where we talked about how this ship, this Chinese-owned container ship, reached the port of Kaliningrad after going through the Northern Sea Route Passage. What made this vessel unique was this was a not an ice-strengthened container ship. The ship sh sailed from Shanghai, went through the Bering Sea, north along the coast of Russia through the Arctic Ocean, and then down along Scandinavia into the Baltic and arrived at Kaliningrad, and from there sailed to St. Petersburg, where this incident took place. Now, I'm going to be the first one to say this. This is a crappy looking ship. This is not a good looking ship. And I don't mean by, by profile. I mean, it looks bad. I mean, that name looks like it's falling off this vessel. It does not look like a well-maintained vessel. So the concept that this ship accidentally dropped an anchor is probably not far from the realm of possibility. But again, let's, let's, let's look at the evidence. So here's the passage where the vessel went, and you can see it out of Kaliningrad. Kaliningrad was that little enclave created after the fall of the Soviet Union, when Lithuania got its independence and Belarus and all the countries broke away, there was one little part of Russia that remained. That is the Kaliningrad enclave between Lithuania and Poland. And that's the route it took up to St. Petersburg. A little bit more in depth here, showing the uh, uh, connector, the gas pipeline between Estonia and Finland. This is from a site called submarinecablemap.com, a very great site, gives you all the underwater cables in there. You'll see there is a myriad of cables that crisscross the ocean uh, around the world. This is the, this is the Gulf of Finland between Estonia and Finland, and you can see multiple strands that are covering there. Uh, if you ever want to have fun, zoom out here and you can see how the world is connected by these underwater cables. Uh, it's one of the reasons why there's such importance today in defending and protecting these. I pulled this video from Twitter, Marcus Johnson. I'll have the link to it. It's a really good AIS. They uh, pulled it off marine traffic. So a really good one. I'm going to let this play. You'll see the two areas where the cuts took place. Here is the Finnish nav warning. Here is the Estonian uh, nav warning. And here you see, I'm going to pause it here. This is the new, new polar bear coming in. Alongside of it is a 
Russian container ship, nuclear powered container ship. Don't see those too often. What you'll see here is uh, a coincidence where it crosses over the nav warning and there are sonar sound disturbances in the water at that exact moment. There's a period here just before this where the ship drops speed just a fraction down to about nine knots, but it maintains it's about 11, 12 knot speed here. It's gonna cross over the Estonian cable here. And again, you get the same kind of incident. So that video gives you a pretty good indication that the new, new polar bear was at the site that coincided with the breaking of the cables and the pipelines uh, due to when the cables and pipelines were severed and noise disturbances in the Gulf of Finland. Pretty good evidence right there, but th there's more. Here's a shot of new, new polar bear at the dock in St. Petersburg. And while it's hard to see in this evening picture, the ship's anchor chain is down on the port side. Uh, the port side anchor chain is down. You do not normally drop an anchor to moor along a berth to move containers unless there's a good chance of bad weather and you're going to get blown off the berth. That's not the case here. This is strange to see the anchor down in this scenario. Then you receive this note that went out. This came from uh, the uh, company. Uh, this is uh, from the shipping company, New New Shipping Company, to all its booking agents. Due to the malfunction of New New Polar Bear, the anchor needs to be repaired. The New New Polar Bear 2303 West, which is the, the route they're on, will be delayed about 10 days. Thank you for always your support and cooperation. We are deeply sorry for the inconveniences caused. Okay. Kind of know that the new, new, new polar bear has had an anchor malfunction. Saw the anchor chain in the water in St. Petersburg. You get this note saying that the anchor is a problem. Uh, new, new polar bear has got other issues. This is the image of her coming in to Archangel, uh, northern Russia, where she has seemed to have some of the stack collapse. This has nothing to do with anything, but again, goes back to the issue of this vessel and problems associated with it. So let's talk about an anchor and dropping an anchor for a minute. So for those of you who don't know, I was a merchant mariner for many years. I went to SUNY Maritime. Uh, I was a licensed deck officer. I've dropped anchors many times. Uh, it is very difficult to drop an an anchor on accident. There are three things that prevent you from dropping an anchor. Uh, the very first one here is something called the riding pole. Prevent the anchor from falling. It's a kind of a chain stopper. Uh, this is either a large weight that is put on top of the chain and it prevents the chain from running, or it's a clamp uh, of some kind that will physically prevent the anchor from running. What you're seeing here in this picture is the anchor is down this, the hawse pipe, and it hangs on the side of the vessel where you see the anchors on the side of the vessel. It comes up through the hawse pipe over this, the riding pole. Here you have the chain stopper down in this case, and then it comes over the capstan uh, or the anchor windlass, excuse me, the anchor windlass. And this is the motor you use to drop and lower the anchor down to the chain locker down below. So number one, this chain stopper is gonna prevent the anchor from running. That's number one. Number two, this big, huge, massive brake here. This brake is gonna prevent this large gypsy wheel from spinning, which drops the anchor. The other element, the third element is you can engage the motor here. This is the motor for the, for the uh, winch. You can engage the motor and lock the motor so that the gypsy wheel will not fly. Even if you, un, you know, take the brake off, the motor won't turn because the motor is not engaged. So you have three things on this anchor to prevent an anchor just for dropping. What was probably happening is this ship had prepared one anchor to drop just in case. Not an unusual thing to do where you would prep an anchor for dropping. Uh, but you would usually have a crew up on the bow and you would still have some safety provisions in place to prepare that anchor. You may have the motor running, for example, make sure your winch motor is running. Uh, you would probably still have maybe the motor engaged or disengaged the motor, but you would have the brake on and the riding pole still on to make sure when you're ready to drop it, most large vessels, unlike TV shows and movies, don't just let the anchor free, free run, uh, you know, and just use the brake. Uh, they will usually back the anchor out. They'll, they'll drop it or, or, or release it, lower it by using the motor. You don't want the chain running free and, and spinning out. What appears to happen here 
is they prepared this anchor for dropping. They may have disengaged the motor and just had the brake holding it, uh, or they had the brake and the motor holding it. And the motor either slipped, the clutch went, and they started dropping this anchor. And this anchor could have been slowly paying out the entire time. Bottom starts coming up, the chains dropped, and all of a sudden that anchor is dragging across the bottom. And what happens is that anchor will fetch up on those pipelines and sever the pipelines until it can't sever anymore, until the, it won't go anymore. And eventually it breaks. And probably what happened here is if you look at the anchor chain, the anchor uh, chain links are solid pieces. They're, they're, they're solid pieces, but they are in 90 foot lengths, what are called shots. And there's a detachable link there is a link that is put in there with a pin and it's locked into place. And that's how you get long anchor chain. You don't just have one huge long piece of anchor chain, you have these individual shots. And as that anchor is dragging, it fetches, it all of a sudden comes under a full load. And unlike movies like Battleship, where you see Missouri drop its anchor and then it power slides. First of all, that water is way too deep to drop your anchor. I've got lots of problems with the movie, but an anchor is not designed to stop a ship. And what happens here is the anchor will give way, or more importantly, the weakest link will give way, which is that detachable link on the chain. So probably the first or second shot of chain broke and the, the anchor that was out still dragged along the bottom. And the reason we probably know this is because they recovered the anchor. Uh, I think it's pretty conclusive that new, new polar bear was the culprit. It's the vessel that broke the pipeline and the cables. And it was this ship's anchor that belongs to it that broke it. Obviously, what I would want to do is get on board New New Polar Bear and take a look at that anchor windlass, see what's going on with it, uh, look at the chain, see if the chain broke, and determine what caused it. Now, was this internal sabotage? I got to say, if you're going to sever cables, Dropping a ship's anchor is not the way to do it, especially on a ship that had a high profile voyage like this. Granted, this may be fourth dimensional, you know, chess that people are thinking this is the perfect ship to do it. I just think this is a crappy ship that is not well maintained. And they literally let an anchor slide, dragged it on the bottom, fetched up on some cables, which is not surprising because the bottom is littered with them. And now we find this out, especially a ship that has half a container stack collapse. I, I just think this is this is an accident by some pretty inept mariners and in, in, in shipping firm right now. I, I don't think this was a evil plan by Chairman Xi and, and Putin to break apart the NATO alliance by severing a, a gas and telecommunication, telecommunication cables between Finland and Estonia. Maybe wrong. This may be the most brilliant gray zone sabotage plan ever perpetrated. And if it is, man, they picked the best case scenario ship to do it because new, new polar bear is a piece of crap. And uh, it, 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 it's pretty good. I would have just probably fished a cable over the back and uh, not let anybody know and have no evidence whatsoever about it. So anyway, and I know there's a lot of comparison with this with Nord Stream. I think that's two separate cases. Uh, Nord Stream is is in deeper water. It, it, it's not here. There's no indication of vessels uh, having damage like this with an anchor missing. Uh, this is there's a lot of evidence that goes right back to New New Polar Bear, and I think that's the the, the culprit here. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell to be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment. I'm sure there's lots of comments. If I'm wrong, if you have if you have a, a, a more evidence or suppositions, please include them down below. Love talking about this stuff. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a big thumbs up, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? Well, you can contribute to the page by hitting the super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly, yearly subscriber. We're putting a fund together to contribute to buy a new hanker for a new, new polar bear. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm not helping that ship at all. Till our next video, this is Al, signing off.